Now turn our attention to the pros and cons of the new TLD antiretroviral drug aimed at suppressing HIV in those that are infected. For more, we're joined uh, in our Pretoria studio by Dr. Farid Abdullah. He is the Director for AIDS and TB Research at the South African Medical Research Council. Doctor, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you, Blaine. So, the Department of Health uh, launching this new and improved combination treatment uh, for HIV. The acronym we know is uh, TLD. It's the new three-in-one, I understand, pill. Talk to us about this. How revolutionary is this drug? Well, um, in the old days, a person living with, a with AIDS had to have uh, a whole handful of pills taken uh, at least twice a day and um, over the last uh, six or seven years uh, three drugs have been combined into one single pill uh, this is called a fixed dose combination and we've had that in South Africa since 2013 um, but last week the Minister of Health um, announced that a similar three-in-one drug but a, a slightly better drug uh, will now be used uh, for uh, certain patients in South Africa and some of the old patients will stay on their own old drugs. So this is an all-round improvement and you know, it's part of the continuing search to get HIV medicines better and better. But this is a big step forward. So big step forward um, and I understand so it's less side effects and much cheaper, Doc. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, uh, yes. So it's, it's less. Yeah, I lost the sound a bit, but you're, you're right. The, yeah. the drug is much, uh, 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 has fewer side effects. So this drug contains a drug called Dolutegravir, which wow. has been used in the US and uh, Europe since 2013. So it's tried and tested. It works well. And in South Africa, we're fortunate to have this drug as I said, in one single pill with two other drugs. Mm. Uh, it's more potent which means that somebody who starts treatment anew will have uh, uh, reached their viral suppression. That means the virus will decrease in their blood within a much shorter period of time. Patients who are on this drug uh, tend to, um, to fall off treatment uh, in lesser numbers. Um, and also, uh, once you have better viral control, then the person with HIV transmits uh, less of the virus to other people. Yeah. So all around, uh, uh, this is better. But also, uh, Blaine, it's a smaller pill. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take it in the morning or at night, whereas with the previous drug, you, you had to take it at night because of some of the uh, side effects uh, of that drug. Yeah. So overall, it's much better. H having said that, there are a couple of problems. Mm. So some women will experience uh, weight gain. Um, you know, and uh, that's not a good thing. And they can discuss with their doctor whether they want to stay on the previous fixed dose combination or three, three in one pill, yeah. or they want to switch to this drug. Um, another thing is that patients who have tuberculosis yeah. will need a higher dose of this drug. So those patients and their doctors might decide to continue with the old drug. But can you see where I'm going with this? We are now having yeah. an an additional choice here. So the aim is to give patients a choice of drugs and doctors a choice of drugs to choose from. Right. But this is certainly all around uh, the best drug we have for first line treatment for HIV. So, so what I'm getting from you, Doc, is that the, the pros uh, far outweigh the cons, but they are cons. Um, but you're saying one of them is weight again, which I, I, I guess is a small issue. But for those that are co-infected with uh, HIV and TB, how safe is, is it for them? You said they, they need a higher dose. Yes, that's, uh, that's correct, Blaine. So, if, you know, TB is very common in patients who ha have HIV. And in these patients, if they develop tuberculosis, then the dose of dilutegravir needs to be doubled. Mm. But um, this is well known by the doctors, and they can uh, put them on, on this double dose. So if somebody starts with the new pill, and then they develop tuberculosis, then the doctor, their doctor or nurse will 
will increase the dose of dolutegravir mm. uh, for that period uh, to cover the TB infection. But if somebody has not yet started with antiretrovirals and they have TB, then we would recommend that they start TB treatment and then they stay on the previous fixed dose combination until they're ready to switch later after the TB has been cured. What about pregnant women, uh, Doc? Um, pr uh, women that are in the early stages of, of pregnancy, is it safe for them? So, uh, Blaine, you've done your homework, I see. Um, <laughs> And I'm answering quickly before you finish your question because I can't hear the second half of your question, but I'm guessing what it is. Um, yeah, so there is a problem with pregnant women, um, and um, there's a difference of opinion uh, when it comes to pregnant women. Um, the WHO actually says that after a detailed discussion with a pregnant woman, it can be considered for use in pregnancy, but our guidelines in South Africa do not recommend it for anyone who wants to conceive mm. or a woman who is um, uh, pregnant for up to six weeks. After six weeks of pregnancy, it's possible to use this drug. Oh. And the government has taken a conservative, a cautious approach to this issue. Um, so it's not recommended for women who want to have a child or have just fallen pregnant. But as I said before, they can go on the previous fixed dose combination um, and there are many options uh, for starting treatment in pregnancy. So this is not a concern, but it's something important to know about. Right. You know, in our country, we have like 4.4 million people on antiretroviral treatment. Mm. And the general knowledge of the public needs to be much better about these drugs. Yeah. Uh, you know, it should be a household topic. Uh, so these uh, television interviews help greatly. Mm. Thank you, Blaine. How can we better uh, get the, the message across, uh, Doc? I mean, is, is there enough programs at grassroots level? I'm, I'm talking about rural areas uh, as well, you know, to get this message across. I mean, you're saying that it's not recommended for, 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 pregnant, uh, for, for people that want to fall pregnant, but not many people would have known that un until, you know, the media will ask that question. Are our health uh, officials and health practitioners briefed with regards to this so they can better educate people that request these drugs? Well, I'm happy to say that every time there is a change in the way we provide antiretroviral treatment, the Department of Health uh, issues a, a guideline. This is a document and it comes in the detailed, boring form, but it's also there's a very nice uh, a 16-page pamphlet uh, and um, this is also available uh, on, on, their, on their cell phones so they can refer to it. So the doctors and the nurses have um, really quite a good uh, idea of what drugs to use when and uh, when there are new drugs like, like the one we're talking about, TLD, mm -hmm. uh, which by the way stands for Tenofovir, Lamivudine, Dolutegravir. Those are the three drugs yeah. in this new pill. So from the health worker's point of view, there's coverage, but from the public, public's point of view, I think you're right, we could have more, more media programs, you know, more general media, and uh, I'm sure the government is thinking about increasing uh, its public communications uh, campaign, but so should NGOs, and, and the media itself must uh, take uh, the initiative yeah. and put this out. Not just wait till World AIDS Day once a year. You know? No, true. And better you pronounce that, uh, the meaning of the acronym, than I do, Doc. But it is an important, no doubt, uh, drug, uh, revolutionary in some regards. The whole aim, I guess, is to get these drugs cheaper and with less side effects and to keep people on the treatment, as you're saying, it's just a, a fixed dose. Where was it developed, Doc? So uh, this drug was developed in the in the uh, in the U.S. and uh, by a big pharmaceutical company. But the wonderful thing about this drug is that within months of it being developed, a voluntary license was issued to generic companies, uh, mainly in India, who have been producing this drug. And you know we're not the first to use this drug. It's being used, as I said, in in Europe and the U.S but also in most countries in Africa they've already started using this drug. The amazing thing which you referred to earlier, Blaine, is that it's even cheaper, it's a better drug, more potent, fewer side effects, but it's even cheaper than the um, fixed dose combination or the right. single pill 
that we've been using up to now. So you can buy this drug in South Africa, and at least the government can buy it, for 75 rand a month, uh, compared to, you know, my numbers are out of date. But if you had to buy the same drug in the U.S., it would be, uh, you know, uh, $1,000 or $2,000 a month. Um, so we have generics, which are good quality generics, and are now available in this country. Our government will procure this drug from at least five or even six companies. Their prices vary a little, but the, the lowest price from one of the companies is 75 rand a month. That's uh, $60 a year to treat uh, HIV. You know, It's a huge step forward. Yeah. It, it, 20 years ago, when we were fighting for treatment, we never imagined that we could get these drug prices uh, down so low. Mm. So that makes it all uh, sweeter for everybody, including yeah. the people like you and me who are paying for this drug, right? Look, uh, children, I want to talk about children, Dr. Abdullah. And we know that HIV and TB uh, in children remains a challenge. And there's very little options uh, with regards to HIV and TB uh, medication for children. How does this play into that regard? Blaine, I, I'm, starting to, I'm starting to think you know more about the subject than I do. So, uh, <laughs> we try. We've got good researchers um, here, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, with children it's a problem. So, th so the new fixed dose combination is not available for children under the age of 10 years old. That can be used from the age of 10 onwards. Um, and um, with children, you know, it's always been such a battle uh, with HIV and TB. Mm. Um, you know, a, a lot of uh, the times uh, small children have to be given syrups. These syrups are, are like drawn up in a syringe and measured. And old grandmothers or, 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 or mothers must do it. Um, they don't get it exactly right. Um, and uh, tuberculosis is also very difficult to treat in children. Mm. In fact, it's, it's, it's really difficult to diagnose tuberculosis in children because yeah. they don't cough up the, sp the sputum that you mm. need to mm. test um, and uh, tuberculosis in children who have HIV is even more complicated and dangerous um, but having having said that um, you know fortunately the the main change that has happened with children mm. is that they are not not being born any longer with HIV mm. Mm. so 10, 15 years ago, we literally had 50, 60,000 children being born every year yeah. uh, from, from the mothers who had HIV. Now we have a very good intervention where the mothers get treatment during pregnancy and, uh, and after uh, pregnancy in the breastfeeding period. The children also get antivirals for six weeks to six months, depending on their, on their level of risk. And we have reduced transmission of HIV to children by more than 90, 95 yeah. percent. But there still are uh, infections in children and there's some incredible research going on at the moment. Mm. Um, the Medical Research Council, one of our researchers, has a project now to, to test something called a broadly neutralizing antibody, giving it to children who are HIV negative right. but born to HIV positive mothers. And these are all strategies to get that transmission in children uh, to zero. Uh, because as you said earlier, it's so difficult to treat yeah. HIV in children. Um. Look, great strides, no doubt, have been made with regards to the fight against HIV and AIDS. But we know the challenge still exists. We've got over 8 million people, around 8 million people that are infected with HIV in South Africa. Worldwide, we're looking at a number of over 37 million people. Doc, just a, a, a parting shot with regards to World AIDS Day. What's your advice or, or message to people that are watching? You know, uh, this is not a, a sprint. It's a marathon. And actually, most of us are exhausted and tired. Um, but we have to think of this uh, in the long term. A as you said, um, there are 7.9 million, 8 million people with HIV in um, our last, at our last count, which is 2017, we had 231,000 new infections. So the new infections are still continuing. 
But we have to tackle both treatment and, and we need to put at least another two to three million people on treatment. That's no small effort. Yeah. At the same time, we have to do much more to reduce those infections. That means not just a pill of some sort, although there are, are some medical interventions, but a behavior change and constant testing yeah. um, and uh, safe sex. But I think we're a little jaded uh, with the AIDS epidemic in this country. So we all need to, government and ourselves and the NGOs, you know, need to take a, a breath yeah. uh, and um, a retool. Um, but if you ask for a parting shot, I'm happy to say that there are some incredible uh, research uh, projects on the go. So I can tell you that um, the president of the Medical Research Council is testing a new HIV vaccine. We expect some results from that in 2021, the early results. Uh, in our Durban unit, we are part of a big global uh, project where we are testing an injectable antiretroviral mm, for mm. preventing HIV. So this uh, injection happens every, every eight weeks. <coughs> Imagine that. You don't have to take your one pill once a day. You take one injection every two months. So it's all getting better and better. So there's quite a lot happening uh, on the research front. And, uh, you know, uh, these will start to yield even new tools. Yeah. But in the end, people have to be more aware that HIV is a lifelong illness. This one pull once a day doesn't take it away. Yeah. You still have a disease for the rest of your life, you know. Yeah. And um, we just need to be... I, I feel fine that with 8 million people in South Africa, we still don't take the precautions we, we, we should. Mm. Our young people don't seem to care too much about getting infected or getting pregnant. Um, so much more needs to be done across the board and it, it calls for uh, determination. Um, you know, the, 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 the long, we're in this for the long haul. Yeah. So, so we've got to constantly work at it. Um, you asked for a last parting shot and um, I gave you a few. Thank you. And we do appreciate it. Look, I, I guess the message is we've got no option, Doc. We have to keep on keeping on. I mean, we, we know with, with regards to the sharp focus is on the women and girls between the ages of 15 and 24 that continue to bear the brunt of this uh, epidemic, uh, epidemic. But no doubt, lots of strides uh, have been made, but lots of challenges still ahead. And we do appreciate your expertise here on the program. Thank you very much. Be well. Thank you, Blaine.